You guys, I am so happy to have a very special guest today, the wonderful Esther Abrami. It's such a pleasure to have her. I will spare you the biographical notes because I want her to introduce herself. But if you catch this later, it will be released in a podcast episode. You can read all about her in the show notes of the episode. I'm actually going to go here and share the link to her website. Um, but Esther is a wonderful violinist uh, advocate. Uh, she has a very powerful online presence. She will hopefully tell us all about this new single that came out yesterday. And she's just very, very active in our musical community. So it's very special to have her today as I'm starting the live, the weekly lives, resuming them after a little hiatus. It's great to be back. So in just a quick note, Esther, sorry for that. Uh, little information. So the lives are coming back weekly on Wednesdays at 11 a.m. I've got some fun projects coming up for you, including a workshop practicing for peak performance. All of the information for that's going to be available soon. But enough now. Let's get Esther. Um, I'm going to pass on the mic to her. So Esther, thank you so much for being with us today. And um, please tell us about you. Of course. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me, firstly. Um, and well, so I think you, you said the main thing, I'm a violinist. Um, I'm French originally, I'm actually in France right now. And um, I then went to the UK when I was 14 years old to study, to keep studying music. And I went to Cheatham School of Music, a music school in, the, in Manchester, um, which offered both um, academics and music at a high level, which is what I was kind of looking for. So I went there for four years and uh, then I went to the Royal College of Music uh, to do my undergrad studies. Um, so I went to London for that and I just finished literally um, about a few weeks ago my master's degree at the Royal Birmingham Conservatoire. So yeah, I've just been, <laughs> I've had a, quite a bit of years of study behind me. Um, so that's on the kind of the studying side and then um so you've mentioned it a little bit i've been well i am pretty active on, on social media it's something i started about four years ago and that kind of grew a lot since and it's 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 helped me so much in so many different ways and it's been amazing to have to have a community on online really to share my music with um and um recently i signed with sony uh, for uh, my very first album and uh, some singles are starting to be released um, which is uh, yeah which is really exciting mm, yeah this is so great and it was so wonderful I to read your biography and read your background story so I encourage everyone to go to your website and if they don't know you to get to know more about you I love how this deep love of music got you to where you are today and um but do you want to tell us a little bit before we turn to the listeners questions, tell us a little bit about these singles that you're releasing right now, because I really love the backstory. Of course, so there's three that have been released so far. Um, the first one was uh, Romance by Clara Schumann. And um, so in, in my album, it's been a focus for me to um, record pieces by women composers. Um, so when I was all, all my years of study, I, I never I never played any pieces by women composers. And um, it, it seems, you know, silly to say because in a way that actually didn't even, it really did not cross my mind. I, not at one point did I think, how come is it that the composer not, composer's not a woman? I just accepted this fact. And I think that's actually a very dangerous um, thing to, <laughs> to be taught in a way. And, I, you know, it, it, I guess it just wasn't, yeah, it, it just wasn't a thing. And and so for me, I wanted to, I, I recently discovered some beautiful, beautiful pieces by women composers like Clara Schumann and the latest one by Amy Beach. And um, I, just, I just really hope that by recording it, firstly, more people get to know the music and so it becomes more popular. But also I hope that other violinists or the musicians, it can encourage them to play it. Um, you know, especially, if, you know, I'm, I'm thinking if I post it on social media, people would like the piece and then it encourages them to play it. And so that in the next generations, we have more people and so that this doesn't happen anymore, because I think it's, it's very important for, for girls to have role models. 
and and you know to not just assume that composers are men and mm -hmm. or conductors are men because that's what I thought that's what I thought all, all my years of being a teenager so I, I want to I want to change that and that's why that's why I decided to have a focus on my album for for women composers on top of the fact that you know the music is so so beautiful and that it's not heard that much like you know why you know it, it's great obviously to play some pieces that everybody knows but it's nice to bring, you know, to bring pieces that people don't know so much. And, and to, in a way, I felt a tiny bit freer because there was not so many interpretations of it. So sometimes when you have got a piece that is so famous, you feel like, you know, you can't really have the freedom of doing what you want. Um, but when it's a piece that people don't know as much, I felt a tiny bit freer to really put my own take on it. And so that's, yeah, so two piece, two singles, so one Charish and one Amy Beach Romance that was just released on uh, f last week on Friday and the music video came out yesterday. Um, and um, and then the one in the middle was a um, piece by Ravel, Pavan pour l'enfant des femmes, and um, that is because also I, well, I've got a very big thing for French composers generally. Um, and so it's it's a it's a mix in the album. I don't want to obviously reveal too much as it's still just all coming out bit by bit. But I think women composers and French composers are both a big, uh, big subject of my of my upcoming album. Mm. And I love how it mixes your interests that way. This is great. So I can't wait to see what's next now. <laughs> <laughs> We got some really great questions in from listeners. And if you're watching live, I'm also keeping an eye on you. So, oh, I see Susan is here. Wonderful. Um, let's start with the question uh, about your practice routine. And I know that that's one of the things I really like about you is that you're very generous online with what you share with us. So I know there's already some great YouTube videos on that. But someone was asking about your practice routine. Can you please tell us a little bit about, about what that looks like? Of course. Um, I recently like to practice in the morning. Um, I find it myself that that's the time of the day I'm most efficient. Um, so what I usually try is literally wake up and straight away to practice. Sometimes I have like go for a run or something in, in the morning, but short one. And then, and then I, I, I go into my practice and I do all my practice in the morning so that after, like after I break for lunch and then I'm kind of done with most things um, and then I have the afternoon to create content for socials, reply to emails, do all of that um, and you know at the end of the day usually I do a workout or like do something to to change you know to, to, to think a little bit about something else um, but uh, but yeah, I usually try and really bring all my practice in the morning if I can. If I can't, obviously sometimes there's so much to practice that it has to be afternoon as well. But uh, but I try and try and do it all in the in the morning. And in terms of how I divide that, I usually you know always start with some technical work and then move on to studies and in pieces. So it's usually quite a straightforward um, way of doing it. I mean sometimes when it's concerts coming up, I'll cut out a little bit of the technique work and go straight into the pieces, but try and make exercises within the pieces so that I, I, I improve them that way. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's um, you know, the, the, you mentioned the YouTube videos and it's something that I, I like doing, but it's also very challenging because um, it's a bit scary to put yourself out there, you know, like to, practicing is such a private thing. And the videos that I put there is not me pretending to practice, it's me actually practicing and there's a big difference. And um, so it's, you know, showing, being confident enough to show your flaws in a way, because when you're practicing, you're practicing what's not good. You're not practicing mm -hmm. what's working because then that doesn't practice. So it's, it's, it's been a little, little bit of a challenge, but I do it also to challenge myself because I feel like if I'm filming myself, my practice has really to be efficient. So it pushes me as well. And then I can watch it back and say, oh, actually I've spent like five minutes on this bit and it's not really got better. So maybe I should have found, I should find a new way of doing it. And it seems like people have, do find it really helpful. I think maybe because not so many people do it and you, it's not so often you can really see like a, a practice session because yeah because it's hard to share <laughs> yes yes yeah. i love what you're talking about because that's one of the thing about technique or practicing or 
we want to keep it varied and flexible. And what you're just saying, I mean, what you just said in a short amount of time is just such um, gold. It's like the essence of effective practice. And it's true what you're saying. I think that if we always were being watched while we practice, we would be <laughs> so much <Yeah>. more efficient. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of that time is wasted um, when we're being mindless. Hence, yeah. mind over finger, which... <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Well, they, it's, I mean, it's, it's hard, but yeah, we often, I think, practice because we need to practice, and obviously that's fine, but but yeah, it's so many times I catch myself thinking of like, oh, what am I going to eat tonight, <laughs> something like that, <laughs> whilst I'm practicing, and, and I try, and I try and, and take off these moments, or sometimes if I'll feel tired, and I feel like I'm not going anywhere, I'll take a break and like have a short nap, like a 20 minutes kind of power nap and then think, okay. And then a lot of the time that is so much more efficient. Maybe I lost 20 minutes, but the rest, like the last 30 minutes were so much more efficient. So that worked so much better in the end. I think we, we, we underestimate the, the you know, the, the, how, if we are feeling really, really aware during a practice, how much that makes change on on the way we practice and practicing just for and i learned that <laughs> too late unfortunately but you know i think especially about well all, all instruments but especially violin it's so easy to put in the hours and not see a difference it's so easy because if you practice something wrong you're just getting better at doing it wrong and that's something i wish somebody would have told me earlier and i kind of learned a bit late but but because I've always been so, so, so hardworking from very, very, like in my teenage years, I used to literally like be in the practice room 24 seven. Like it was, I mean, my, my colleagues and, 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 and um, schoolmates literally used to, to laugh at me for like mocking me for how long I would just always be, you know, I'd always be practicing and you'd walk into the practice corridor and it's always be me there <laughs> and uh, all the time. And I used to wake up very early and, you know, like two, two hours before going to school break. I never, <laughs> never hardly ever went to get a coffee or anything. It was always practice, lunch break, practice. It was always, and because I, I, I wanted to get better so badly, but, but yeah, but yet if, if you don't practice in the, right mindset and and really know what you want to improve it's you can very easily practice all these hours and not really see a difference i think that's why it's so vital to have a teacher that really ori orientates you uh, into that direction um because yeah because it can be hard when you're when you're on your own yeah yes absolutely i think also i love what you're saying in terms of learning how to practice better you were mentioning at the beginning how um, you practice in the morning and then in the afternoon that gives you time to, to think about other things. I think those were your words. And that is so important to have that space to also have a life yeah. so yeah. that the human being who's playing music is yeah. also being nourished. Yeah. Um, I think there's a fantastic book called Essentialism by Greg McKeon. Yeah. And he talks about nurturing the assets. So much of what you say goes to, to that. And this mindless practicing that you're talking about, I call that the illusion of work, where we feel that by activating and doing, we feel as though we're getting things done. But at times it makes me feel, um, it makes me think of, um, you know, when you're riding a bike and you're in the low gear, yeah. So there's no resistance whatsoever. So you're just pedaling really fast, yeah. but you know, but yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, it's, it's true. And it's, but yeah, it's, it's not always easy to, to, to have that, to find that balance, um, but but yeah, I found that indeed having having some time to to think as well. And for example, I try and take a day off a week, and sometimes it's not a week; it's sometimes it's once a month. But I try and just have that time, or try and you know, I'm, I feel really lucky to have, for example, my best friend who's not a musician because I can just spend time with her and just you know talk about other things and it's nice sometimes it's, it's, it's needed, I think. Yes. Oh, this is great. Uh, here's another question. As a professional musician, do you experience performance anxiety before concerts? And if yes, what are some of the tips and tricks that have helped you the most to be, to beat pre-concert nerves? 
I mean, to be honest, I would love to to know like if there's any musicians out there who don't get performance anxiety because I think we all do. I think anyway, um, and I definitely do. And um, what I try and do to to make it to control it, I think it's all about controlling it and and having. I think we want some anxiety. We want the stamina, and to have the stamina, we need anxiety. I think like we need some kind of like to feel a little something. If you feel numb, then you don't have that stamina when you're performing. Um, and the excitement. Exactly, the excitement. But I think it's just turning that performance anxiety into something good and something that you can use rather than something that destroys you on stage. Um, I found that having pre-performances really helped. Um, so running through my program to friends uh, or recording it before, um, try and put the pressure up bit by bit on your on your program and what you're playing because I think sometimes for me what what's happening is that you go from playing it by yourself in your practice room to playing it in front of thousands of feet you know thousand people the, the, the pressure goes from that to that and and that's why it's sometimes hard to eat and, and then you've not tested your program under stress so some mm -hmm. of the things that you thought might be good would maybe will not anymore and that would disturb you and make you feel bad and then everything you know goes in circles so I found that putting the pressure up bit by bit so you're building the pressure up to the day of the concert really helped um so yeah so recording it doing a live stream when you're playing it playing it to friends and um, playing it in a and making it a bit harder for yourself let it be you know playing it somewhere somewhere a bit noisy or um uh, playing it when you're um you know if, if you i don't know if you're used to playing it with even if it's with the music try and you know play it without try and make it a bit harder so that the pressure goes up and then on the day of the concert it doesn't feel like it's a huge gap in terms of the pressure that you're experiencing yeah that's what I'm <laughs> yes it's so true what you say that people practice in the practice room and then there's that wishful thinking that whatever they do there in that context, in that mindset, will reflect on stage and then it's almost like it's a different game on stage. So we need to bridge that gap in between. Yeah. I think a lot, like, for example, from like memory seats, like a lot of, I don't know, because I teach a few people and a lot of the time what they ask is, you know, memory sleep, how do you not have memory sleeps, etc. And, um, I always find that it's it's like you and about memory slips or about, about mistakes that you do like that's why you do these pre-performances and in, it's in these performances that you want to make the mistakes because if you do it then then you sort it out and then it won't happen again in performance because you were aware of it and then you sorted the problem out so to actually have these mistakes before it's i think the best way to avoid them on the day mm -hmm. yes there was an episode of the Mind Over Finger podcast with Leila Yosifovic, where she was talking about how people think that you can get to a point where there's no performance anxiety, but if there still is, then you feel bad about having performance anxiety. So I think that the best strategy is to just accept the idea that it's going to be there and just get comfortable with it. And yeah. I think that you illustrated that really well. <laughs> Um, here's a question from Joe. When did you develop your own personal sound? And there's a bunch of follow-up questions. I'll just in, include them right now. Did it just happen for you while you did your own exploration in your practice? Does it change for each piece you play? So we can break that into different pieces. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> I think like, I think sound obviously for, well, for any musician, but especially a uh, string player is obviously a huge thing I think there's different steps I think you know the first step being just knowing the basic to have a good sound and to make the best sound out of your instrument let it be you know a, a sound that's rounded that's that's pleasant etc and that's the first step and then there's a second step when you start experimenting with your instrument of how far you can go in terms of you know especially knowing the value that you've got and and knowing the different types of sounds that you can or you could can be able to make um and not just having that kind of pretty nice sound all the time but try and and, and make that range bigger mm -hmm. and then the last step being finding your own sound um which i still feel like i'm still experimenting with and um you know, it's, 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 I think it's an, I don't know. I feel like it's something that you can experiment with all your life and that can grow and change over time. 
Um, in terms of the pieces, I think, yes, it, it does change. It does change a, a bit. Um, personally, I, I mean, I don't know, I feel maybe this styles of, of pieces that we maybe feel more comfortable with. I love romantic pieces. I, I find like the, the, that's, this is the sound that I, I, I prefer personally. Um, but um, but I'm trying I'm trying to to experiment. I, I realized that, for example, I a lot of the time I would play very like quite loud and and a nice big sound. But I wasn't really experimenting, for example, with some more quiet and um, small sound, which which can really bring a lot of contrast, and that can be great. So so yeah, it's a, it's a never ending process, I think. And uh, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm still experimenting. <laughs> yes. I think the word that keeps coming back is experimentation and Joe had it in the question as well, but that's, that's where it's at. There's no, I think that what I, when I get this question, I feel like people are looking for the magic recipe for sound production. And of course there are some parameters for each yeah. instrument on how to develop it and, you know, for strings how to use your bow, how to use your vibrato, all of these things. But then it comes to that word that you've used and all of these things that you've so eloquently said is the experimentation and exploration. Yeah. Well, I think, of course, yeah, as, as there is, you need to, I think, have that, of course, that basic first. And 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 I think it's some, actually something that can still always be improved. And, um, and this, you know, obviously the actual sound, but you know things like as you said like the vibrato which is an add-on but which can bring so much and just for example like improving your intonation as well is and and that's something i think as 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 string players we keep improving all our or i don't know we meant we meant to improve uh, all our life is that the more in tune you play the the purer the sound will be and and the more ringing it will be uh, for your violin so there's you know i think the more you improve on the technical side of it the more you can be free to experiment and to find your own voice Mm, absolutely. Yeah, this freedom is so great. <laughs> Thanks for bringing this up. I love this. Um, and I love this next question because it ties in to what you were saying earlier with the music of Amy Beach and Clara Schumann. The, the listener wants to know, have you ever been treated differently than men in the music field for being a woman? If so, how did you overcome that situation? Um, so I think... Because uh, I've, I've sometimes been asked this question, and and sometimes it is by men, and and you know it is more it's it's asked sometimes in a way of you know well you know before yes there was differences but now it's not anymore so what you know what are you not you on about what are you complaining <laughs> and I think it's it's not going to be like a direct oh you're a woman I'm not going to work with you obviously it's never like that anyway right. um, but. You know things like side comments things like that have been said to me um that you just kind of ignore or like smile at it but just kind of move away from it and it's you know things like oh you got this because of the way you look you got this because the guy that did the interview liked you and um, and it's it seems so childish like it seems and I already you know it was some things that already as a teenager I, I, I got a little bit a good grade and that you know oh the reason you got a good grade is because of that and I thought it was just a childish thing that would stop but it didn't and it's 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 sad that it, it, it keeps you know it keeps going and I hope I hope it, it will get better but that's something that is still going on and I think this the first part, the second part is also that I've sometimes struggled to be taken seriously, um, especially uh, because I'm, I'm still quite young and sometimes when I'll you know come in a in a, in a room with somebody who's who's who is older as a man and then and there's that kind of feeling of imbalance and feeling of oh well I you know I and so so it's 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 been a little bit of a struggle and and I've learned to. To, to impose myself and to feel confident enough to to know that what I have to say is worthy of being said. Um, but it's, yeah, it's, I think that's why it's important that, you know, we're coming back about the role models, coming back about, you know, women be, like showing women composers, showing women conductors and, and just showing women who, you know, can be in the field and, and, and be the way they want without, having to get 
criticism for it and you know why why do we all well, always have to comment on a woman's appearance when hardly is hardly ever the case with a man and you know you can be the way you want and you know it, it's not yeah it's just I just I think it's improving I think it's you know definitely seen improvement but but yet yeah, there's still so much judgment around around women and around the way they are and what they wear and and the reason why they got where they are and it's just it just doesn't have its place in in 2021 I think yes and I think it's such an important discussion to keep having because the awareness is uh, so much higher than it used to be. Yeah, it is. And because it is, we start to really, I think, react to it in more time. I mean, there were times when it was even said to me, wow, you have a big sound for a woman or for a girl. You have a big sound for a girl. And at the time, I think... Maybe 10 years ago, these things would be said and no one would have reacted because this kind of... No one did react. I mean, yeah, yeah. it's exactly that. I, I remember also talking about the big sound for, for when I mean, I remember being told that I play like a Barbie doll. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's it, these kind of comments. But it, it was, as I said, it's things that, a lot of things that were accepted before and I, I talked about it before but also uh, you know when I remember when I asked about you know why women wouldn't be why we don't see women conductors and I got the reply that you know conductors need to be respected and so that's why it has to be men you know <laughs> and you know all these kind of things which were just the you know that was the way it was before and nobody really took much notice of it now as you say now it's getting noticed and i think that's what's wonderful and so that's why we need to have these discussions because because people are finally listening yes absolutely and then i feel that now because there's this awareness we feel a little bit more comfortable confronting these comments when something like that is said i do feel more comfortable now saying looking at someone in the eye and say what exactly do you mean by this and or even at times saying do you really think this is an appropriate comment, what you just said, as a while ago, maybe? Yeah. I, th I think women in the way were just taking it in or yeah. trying to diffuse it to not cause yeah. a situation. And as of now, I think that it's actually very important that we do bring it up when something like this is said so that the, the behaviors continue to change. Yeah, no, definitely. I think it, you know, it can have a big impact on self-confidence and it did for me because you start, you know, you start questioning of, you know, even if these things are, you know, said just like that, then you start questioning and thinking maybe I didn't deserve this. And, and it's very dangerous, it's, especially for, for, you know, I think when you grow up and then you start realizing that, okay, no, there's just somebody's view on it, but what, when you're younger and, it can be very harmful to have this kind of comment said to you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you for answering this so candidly. And I, I love this question. Um, Esther, I, I have some rapid fire questions for yeah. you right now. <laughs> so for the people who are dreaming of a career that resemble yours, can you tell us a little bit about what your life looks like? Sure. Um, I think it's a, it's a big mix and that's what I love about what I do. Um, so there's of course practicing violin and playing concerts and different types of concerts. So there's, you know, classical concerts, of course, but also I've started to do collaborations with other types of um, musicians, which has been great. There's also photo shoots, video shoots, traveling, um, a lot of time spent with cats. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, and it's the, it's the mix of that that I love, the, the mix of, of you know, of I love fashion, for example. So all this type of kind of um, content creations and and photo shoots, video shoots, and and on the same time, all the musical side of things, um, to practice, play concerts, record, um, yeah, that's gonna, <laughs> that's gonna be a good good view of it. <laughs> yeah, keeps you busy, but also um, very creative. Yeah, that's what I like in all aspects. I love that. What's a habit? So you were talking about how you used to practice so much. Um, what is a habit that you have and that you think contributed to your success? 
Um, I think one of them is definitely have being very extremely well organized. <laughs> and that's something that my mother taught me from a very young age. And for example, every evening I would have all my stuff ready for the next day. So like what I'm going to wear the next morning, what and what my bag is ready. So I would never wake up in the morning and you're late and then you forget something and things like that. It's just a small example, but that's the way I deal with my life generally. Um, no, I, I've got lists for everything and I just get things done like that way. And, and, and it's helped me a lot because um, when you've got a lot to do, it, it just you just need to be organized. So that's one of them. And I think also also being being just very open minded and mm. not giving up, but in an open minded way, not in a way that, you know, it's like that goes against the window so many times in a way that it didn't work you get up and you try a different way for the same goal but try a different way and and uh, until it works and and you know it will uh, in the end you will find a way and I think it's just having that mindset because it's it's so easy in a field that's that is so so challenging and so difficult and so competitive to to want to give up the first time that you fall yes I love that I feel like we should make a make up a term for this uh, open or flexible grit. No, this is yeah. so great. <laughs> and what you just said is so important because people feel like they can be either open minded and flexible or have grit. And you just showed us so well how they go together. Yeah, yeah. It's it's it's. I think it's definitely because you know there's that famous thing saying. What is it? Something like you can't keep doing the same thing and expecting different results. Mm -hmm. And it's so true. But in the same time, of course, we're not saying to go and start something else. That's not what we're saying. It's mm. have the same goal. I, there was a very good uh, in a in a in a book on self development I read, which a very good um, comparison of a boat trying to get somewhere, but yet to get there, you'll have to keep or you know changing the orientation to together because obviously with the sea it moves but yet the goal is the same you, 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 we, we have the same goal but yet you have to keep keep changing direction all the time to get to reach that goal and it's the same thing I think for in your life it's, it's you have you have to be flexible but to attain that one goal that you've been wanting mm. oh that's a beautiful analogy I love that what skills do you think young musicians studying today should acquire in addition to learning to play their instrument <laughs> Um, I think if we're talking about especially classical musician, I think a tiny bit of, of marketing basics <laughs> would be good. It's something I wish I had um, learned by myself. Um, but I think, you know, there's this whole, like, I don't know, it's nearly badly seen to kind of, you know, sell yourself. <laughs> and right. um, it's this myth around it that, you know, it's something that's bad and it's something that's a bit shameful and, and, and it's, it's just so far away from the truth. And I think it's a, uh, when you've got that mindset, then it can become very difficult to then, you know, uh, yeah, to say yourself and it, it, there's nothing shameful about it. And it can be very enjoyable actually to share what you do instead of seeing it as, oh, I'm just trying to push myself forward, but actually just share, share what, what you're doing in a way that appeals to people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think if anything, we all want that. We all want recognition for what the hours of work that we've put in. So a lot of the time, I think so many amazing, amazing musicians don't get the recognition that they deserve just because maybe they have, we haven't learned how to put it out there for many people to see. Mm -hmm. and be attracted you know to, for, for yeah for people to, to to notice us and I think there's great tools for that and even you know this this social media of course but there's even things around that 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 are important um about you know making contacts in the industry and and things like that that we just don't teach us um right that I think is yeah it's it's necessary can make the difference a huge difference actually Yes. It's so important what you just said, because we keep talking about musicians, uh, you know, wanting to express themselves and being creative. And yet at times we are either shy to hop on the platform ourselves, or, you know, maybe some people are being criticized for 
using yeah. a platform. But at the same time, is there are people out there who want to see what you have to offer. So for example, I'm really happy that you are on Instagram and YouTube doing all of the things that you're doing because it's very inspiring for me to you know hear you play, watch all of this wonderful content that you're sharing. And we know for a fact that there's hundreds of thousands of people who feel the same way that I do. And so I think that if everyone that feels that they have something that they want to say and that they want to share, um, feel like they, they can give themselves this permission to step into this space where they are sharing it to the world, then there is someone out there who will be touched by their art, but by what they're sharing, by their words, by their music, all of these things. So, and I think, you know, even if we're talking about finding a job, you know, you know, with an interview or something, sometimes because of the way we taught, it's so focused on the music, the music, just the music matters. You don't, you know, nearly you don't matter. You, your personality nearly doesn't matter. And at a point, you know, it's just that you focus on getting better, better, better on your instrument, which is of course the main thing, but yet, if you don't know how to put yourself to, 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 so that you come across as somebody that people are interested in and people want to know more about, then, you know, that's a huge life skill that you're missing on. Because, you know, if, if you meet somebody, let it be in a job interview, let it be in a, I don't know, after a concert or something, if, if, you're, if you look like somebody that they'd love to chat with, there's much more chances of you getting a job or getting the opportunity if you know with comparing two same performances and and it's it can be i think very frustrating if you don't get that opportunity just because you went you know open enough to to show yourself and 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 to know how to come across and and it's something that can be you know dangerous especially when you when you just focus on the music and and you know don't focus on yeah on anything else i don't know if that makes sense but <laughs> yeah well it's the connection yeah the connection and that's yeah. one of my favorite thing about social media is i feel that i get to know the artists behind the music yeah, yeah this is great um do you have a favorite tool in the practice room do most people say metronome? I'm sure most people say metronome. Do we have that many in the practice room? Um, metronome is definitely a fun one. Um, I was trying to think, do we have any other tools in the practice room? Um, I can't think of anything about my metronome. I'm with you. I am team metronome. Love a metronome. <laughs> you were talking about earlier um, about a self-development book. Do you have a favorite book that you'd like to recommend to the listeners? Um, it's not a self-development book, but I have um, this a book on violin, um, and it's called Principle of Violin Playing. It's by Galamion, and it's a book that I personally really loved. If you haven't read it, it's a uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty great. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I have it in both French and English, and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a really good one. Um, how about a piece of advice that was given to you that is particularly important for you and that you'd like to pass on to the listeners? Um, so whenever I, whenever I struggled or I felt down and I felt like I wanted to give up, my mom used to say to me, if it was easy, everybody would do it. Mm. And that's something that's really, really stuck. And, you know, it's might seem like just a quote, but the thought around it, you know, it's it's yeah if you're struggling if you feel like you're 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 struggling to get there i think for me when i remember that it makes sense you know again yeah if if it was so easy then your goal everybody would achieve it and it wouldn't really be a goal so the reason why you're struggling is because it's difficult and not so many people are able to do it and and that always gave me a lot of you know i, I felt like I, I i wanted to to keep keep going even when i felt down to know, to know, to, to not undermine what you're doing. You know, you, you're, if it's a goal, if it's a life goal, then 
it's it's not that easy and and not that many people can achieve it so you know keep going <laughs> yes it's a little bit like growing pains yeah like we have to go through these growing pains to grow and yeah. at times it's exactly what you say that you have to be willing to go through the growing pains to keep evolving and um, hone in on your skills in the yeah. music field that's for sure john wants me to repeat the name of the book it's principles of violin playing by ivan galamian yes cases thank you for this thank you Kay. <laughs> and finally esther how about a quick actionable tip and i know you have a lot of them <laughs> a quick actionable tip that the listeners could implement today in the practice room um i think i think everyone could probably record themselves i would say i think that will help a lot to have a broader view of what where you are right now you know if it's a piece or whatever you're doing and have a broader view on it a lot of the time we don't really hear everything when we play or we get used to the way we play so to record yourself and listen to it after take the score with you listen to it it usually really really helps sometimes it's difficult on self-esteem because we think oh do i really sound like that i thought i thought i found it better <laughs> but um but it's a very very helpful thing to do that i try and really really do so that so that i don't get any surprise when i do hear myself i record it after a concert but no it's 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 really helpful and and, and you can see with them you know you can pretend that you're the teacher and you're listening to a student and and that kind of mindset really helps if you're feeling stuck yes i love that yes John says, Esther, please keep making cat videos. <laughs> I will. <laughs> well, like, as I, say, I always have cat rescues uh, from, the, from the shelter that we have. So you always keep seeing new faces and um, they all get dragged into listening to Alan playing. <laughs> it's not even like, but... <laughs> Maybe in French we could say les chats mélomanes. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That's great. Estelle, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your wisdom and tell us where to find you, everywhere we can go to find you. My pleasure. Sorry, this noise is actually one of my cat playing with a toy. <laughs> um, so, well, you can find me on all socials, there's the Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, um, but you can also find my music on all streaming platforms. And um, as I said at the beginning, there is some new singles that have been released and there's an album on the way. So, um, yeah, you can find me on there as well. This is very exciting. So, thank you so much, Esther, and thanks for all of you who joined us today. And... Um, We'll see you on the webs. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. See you soon. Have a great day. Bye, you too.